Hello everyone, Mike Aben here with some more KSP Math. This episode's the second of a three-part series on calculating the transfer and capture costs between various bodies in Kerbal Space Program. My focus in part one was getting from Kerbin to the moon, where we use these four formulas to get the job done. If you've not seen part one, you may want to go back and check that one out before diving into part two. Today we're going interplanetary and looking at the cost of getting to Duna. This requires no new formulas beyond the ones introduced last episode, but as we'll see, there are a couple of additional things we will have to consider. So without any further delay, let's do the math. Once again, we'll start by taking a look at the Delta V map provided by the KSP Wiki, link in the description. Except this time we will discover that things aren't quite as carved in stone as they may appear. Starting from an 80 km circular orbit about Kerbin, let's follow the path to Duna, adding up the delta V costs along the way. First, it's 930 meters per second to exit Kerbin's sphere of influence, then a further 130 to get out to Duna. These two costs are combined into a single ejection burn of 1060 meters per second which would be performed from low orbit about Kerbin. At Duna, we're shooting for a 60 km circular orbit. To get the capture burn, we add the 250 meters per second for the capture and the 360 meters per second for the circularization to get a single capture cost of 610 meters per second. With the 1060 meter per second ejection and the 610 meter per second capture, we have a total cost of 1670 meters per second. Okay, that's our benchmark. Let's see how we do. We'll start by ignoring the spheres of influence of both Kerbin and Duna, and just look at the cost of transferring from Kerbin's orbit to Duna's orbit. The transfer orbit would be an elliptical Hohmann transfer with one burn performed at periapsis and the other at apoapsis with the vis viva equations providing the means for calculating these two burns. It is here that we run into a little hiccup. Though Kerbin is a perfectly circular orbit with a radius of almost 14 million kilometers, Duna's orbit is slightly eccentric with a periapsis of under 20 million kilometers and an apoapsis of well over 21 million. Note all the distances we see here are measured from the sun's center. So how are we going to deal with the fact that Duna's orbit is an ellipse rather than a circle? We will be getting back to this question later in the video, but for now I'm going to do what it appears the creators of the Delta V map did. I'm going to pretend that Duna's orbit is a circle with a radius equal to its semi-major axis. Recall that the semi-major axis is simply the average of the periapsis and apoapsis. I should point out here that I am also ignoring Duna's almost trivial orbital inclination of 0 0.06 degrees. We'll talk about inclination when we take on MOHO next episode. Now that we've approximated Duna's orbit to a circle, we can substitute into the two vis viva equations to get a delta V1 of 918.35 meters per second and a delta V2 of 826.05. Note that the parent body here is the Sun, so the mu in these formulas is now the standard gravitational parameter for the Sun. These would be the costs of the burns for a vessel to move from Kerbin's orbit to our circular approximation of Duna's orbit, but of course that's not what we're doing. We're moving from low orbit about Kerbin to low orbit about Duna. We've yet to take into account the gravitational fields for these two bodies. What these two numbers do represent are the speeds at which we need to leave Kerbin's sphere of influence and at which we will be encountering Duna's sphere of influence. Let's start with Kerbin. We need to leave Kerbin's SOI at a speed of 918.35 meters per second. So what velocity do we need at an altitude of 80 kilometers to achieve this? For that we need this formula which I should have mentioned last episode is really just the conservation of energy law in disguise. Once again we substitute in, this time making sure our gravitational parameter is that for Kerbin, and work out that we need a low altitude speed of 3338.64 meters per second. 
Finally, we remind ourselves that we are starting from low orbit about Kerbin and already have a speed of 2,278.93 meters per second. Our ejection burn just needs to provide the difference between these two speeds, getting us 1,060 meters per second for the burn, which, by the way, is exactly the value on the Delta V map. Man, this map doesn't give you any wiggle room. So far so good. Now let's switch our attention to Duna. We've already worked out that we will be encountering Duna's SOI at 826.05 meters per second. The fact that we are now entering the SOI instead of exiting makes absolutely no difference. Physics doesn't care which way you're going. This is just going to be the exact same process as we had with Kerbin. First we calculate our velocity at closest approach, making sure now the gravitational parameter is that for Duna. This comes out to be 1501.97 meters per second. We then calculate the circular orbital velocity at an altitude of 60 kilometers, which is 890.54 meters per second. Our capture is, once again, just the difference between these two, which is 611 meters per second, which, when we round to the nearest 10, again matches the delta V map. So we've confirmed the values in the delta V map. Big deal. What about this business of approximating Duna's orbit to a circle? Does it really matter? Let's find out by making it an ellipse again. By the way, I have dealt with elliptical transfers before, but that was a long time ago, so I'm going to be doing this as if no one has seen that video. We do not know where we will be encountering Duna's orbit, so I'm going to go for the most expensive scenario, and that is an encounter with Duna's periapsis. This may seem a bit counterintuitive, after all, shouldn't it be more expensive to get to apoapsis? It is further away, after all. Yeah, though, I suspect this is far from the first counterintuitive thing you've run into in this game. Isn't orbital mechanics wonderful? Okay, so we're meeting Duna at its periapsis. We start off by, once again, for now, pretending that Duna's orbit is a circle, this time with a radius equal to its periapsis. Don't worry, though, we'll be correcting for this soon enough. We do the same thing as we did before, using the first Visviva equation to calculate the speed at which we need to leave Kerbin's SOI, which comes out to be 811.43 meters per second. This number is actually correct, despite us changing Duna's orbit to a circle. That's because regardless of the shape of Duna's orbit, we need to get the apoapsis of our transfer orbit up to this altitude. And this is the speed that gets the job done. Armed now with our exit speed, we calculate the required burn at LKO using the exact same process as before, the only difference being our new exit speed. This gets us 1039 meters per second for our ejection. A little cheaper than before, which shouldn't be surprising since we are not going as far now. But what about the capture cost? Again, we use the second VisViv equation, this time getting a delta V2 of 739.64 meters per second. This would be our encounter speed with Duna if Duna's orbit were this circular one, but it's not. It's really this. In order to match Duna's true orbit, we need to raise our orbit a little further. How can we calculate how much additional velocity we would need for this? Well, it's just this first this Viva equation again to calculate the delta V required to raise our apoapsis from 19.7 million kilometers to 21.8 million kilometers. Putting in the numbers, we get an additional required velocity of 194.42 meters per second. Adding this to the 739.64 gets our true encounter speed of 934.06 meters per second. Armed now with the correct encounter speed, we can now go to Duna's SOI. Going through all the same steps gets us a capture burn of 673 meters per second. That's 63 meters per second more than what's on the Delta V map. Even if we add in our reduced ejection cost, we're still 42 meters per second more than what the Delta V map would have predicted. I know what you may be thinking, a 42 meter per second difference on a 1,670 meter per second budget isn't that big a deal, and you're right. But Duna's eccentricity is pretty small. Its orbit isn't that far from being a circle. What about more eccentric orbits like Moho or Ilu? Perhaps the differences there would be far less trivial. And what about inclination differences? How do we factor that in? 
Don't worry, my friend, that is all going to be dealt with in the next episode. In the meantime, why not put yourself to the test and see if you can work out the transfer and capture costs if you encounter Duna at its apoapsis. We should start by imagining Duna in a circular orbit, but this time with the radius equal to Duna's apoapsis. One note of caution, when you work out the extra delta V to deal with Duna's eccentricity, think carefully as to whether that speed should be added to or subtracted from your encounter speed. If everything goes right, you should find the ejection cost to be 1,088 meters per second and the capture to be 553. But with that, I'm drawing this particular video to a close. I hope you found it useful and as always, I thank you for watching and hope to see you for the next one.